Hey guys, Jamie Stein here. How are you? Uh, gonna dive into Bethany and Carol. It's time. We're almost at the end of New York, and uh, it's time to roll up our sleeves and dig into this mess and see what's there. Um, I've actually been really reluctant to get into the Bethany Carol fracture, conflict, rift. Uh, I think because um, there's just so much that happened off camera before the season even started. And so by the time we sort of came in to the story, I just felt like we were so bogged down in the muck, in the mire of irrelevant details about you texted this, I texted that, you made this phone call, you said that, you know, he, well, no, no, he said, she said, she said, tit for tat. And I just honestly, I didn't really want to go anywhere near it. I just couldn't, I couldn't feel it and I couldn't feel myself there. It just kind of, every time I kind of walked toward it, I just felt this heaviness in my chest and kind of like, ugh, I don't want to deal with this. Um, but I feel like now that we've kind of watched it play out, I do kind of have, um, it feels easier to kind of take a step back and just sort of look at the bigger picture. Um, because I think what we do really have here, sort of um, looking at the broad scope of things, is basically two women who really didn't want to drop into their hearts, you know, who really didn't want to get really honest about what was going on for them on a deeper level and relating to each other in that way. Um, I think defenses were up for both of them. And that's why we were getting so much of that. Like, no, 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 this is my point. That's my point. This is what you texted. This is what I texted. And just as a general note, like, you know, to anyone watching this, when you find yourself in that kind of like tit for tat dialogue with someone, no one's going to win. I mean, it's, it ain't going anywhere good because it's not really dealing with the real juice of what's happening. Um, and that's kind of what I've seen playing out from the beginning is two women who are just avoiding the juice of what's happening and just kind of staying stuck on a certain non-productive level. Um, so having said all that, I'm going to kind of break down the sort of broad brushstrokes of kind of what I've seen really going on here. I think that if you look back to the beginning of the season, Bethany definitely came in hot. She came in hot. She came in with her feathers ruffled. She came in very, very sensitive to every little thing that Carol did or said. And, you know, if you go back and you rewatch a lot of those kind of contentious moments, you know, from the first like seven or eight episodes, you know, it truly is Bethany every time who escalates the situation. She kind of snaps at Carol. She makes these kind of like really provocative, defensive, overly generalized statements. Like at the Berkshires uh, like dinner party, if you go back and rewatch that, like everything's kind of calm until Bethany, Bethany um, kind of strikes out with this comment where she says something like... Um, I don't need any of your financial support for my charity. And it's like, it's not even what Carol was saying. You know, Carol was basically saying, hey, I've been hearing that you've been going around behind my, like, you know, telling me everything's fine to my face, but then going around behind my back saying you've got complaints about, um, you know, how I've shown up for your charity. And I don't really understand why you're not coming to me directly with any concern you might have which is a very valid point, you know, and Bethany's response to that is, I don't need your support for my charity. I don't need any financial support from you. And it's just, she's not dealing with what Carol's actually saying. Uh, like I said, she's like coming in really hot, really defensive and really oversensitive. And there's definitely like a repeated pattern in those first seven or eight episodes where Bethany really kind of lobs these grenades at Carol and you kind of see Carol trying to navigate what's sort of coming at her fast and furious. So I do think it's sort of fair to say, I mean, I don't like talking in these terms, but it seems like in a way Bethany started it in the sense that she was hot under the collar from the beginning. And I think that, you know, we got to kind of look at the evidence that, you know, on some level Bethany was feeling some kind of way about Carol's support or lack of support for her charity. Um, and I, I, I do want to talk about that for a moment. I'm going to take a little bit of a detour into just Bethany herself and her narcissism. Um, I feel like Bethany and her charity, it's like, for me, it's such an ambivalent experience sort of having watched this. And I think sometimes, 
you know, it's very tempting to want to view things as like an either or, something's all good or it's all bad. When, you know, in actuality, it's usually neither all good or all bad. Usually like many things are true at once. And I think many things are true at once when it comes to Bethany and her disaster relief efforts. Um, I've said this before. I said it on bit sets. I, I actually think Bethany is a very big heart. I think she's got a lot of love to give. I think she actually has a lot of joy in, 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 in the act of creativity and creating things and getting things done. Um, I just think that she has a lot to give. And I do, I do feel that she's got like a huge spiritual inclination inside of her. Um, and I think like that's why in a lot of ways this disaster relief uh, crusade of hers, it's like the best that Bethany has to offer. It's like she's motivated. She's making things happening. It, she's putting it on a big scale. She's putting it out there in front of you know a global audience. It's amazing. And at the same time, I also think Bethany is intensely narcissistic. And um, I do think she's absolutely been feeling herself for doing this charity. I think that, uh, you know, there's been some kind of elitist snobbery of like, I'm doing this. I don't know why everyone's not doing it. Everyone should be doing this and really kind of like just, you know, really feeling herself here. And, you know, you saw it at the beginning of the season. Um, you know, she was, you know, handpicked which housewives could come see her receive her award. Um, you know, for her humanitarian efforts. And it's like, it was Ramona and it was Tinsley because they gave her enough money. It's interesting to me that we have found out since then, Carol did actually donate to her cause. I guess she donated something like $5,000. Um, or may, I don't know exactly what the amount was, but she has donated to her cause. So it's just interesting that like, Bethany was selective about who gave enough, who was allowed to come. And then the same thing with inviting Dorinda to Puerto Rico. Like there was a whole conversation with her assistant about which housewife can handle it. Uh, which, you know, in a way, which housewife do I, you know, deem deserves to be there with Queen Bethany at her, like, you know, uh, you know, uh, on her, her noble crusade. There is kind of a sense with Bethany that it's like everything kind of has to stop. Because she has now undertaken this disaster relief. And everyone's got to kind of fall in line and sort of, I'm not going to say bow down to her, but recognize her, support her, and get on board with what she's doing. Um, I think both of these things are true. And, you know, I think what I'll just sort of say is just a final side note to Bethany. It's like, I do think that, you know, in terms of someone who has this big heart and also has this huge narcissistic streak, I do see her narcissism as a way to really kind of have a sense of control in life. I think, you know, um, as someone who does have a big heart and does have a lot to give, you know, everything that she's described about her past is that it was very chaotic. It was very unpredictable. Uh, there was addiction. It sounds like there was physical abuse. There was emotional abuse. And so the sense that I get with Bethany is that viewing everything through the lens of how it relates to her and me, myself, and I kind of gives her some form of control in this world. Like it's like a filter she can hang on to. Whereas if she's not viewing everything through the prism of how it relates to her, suddenly the world just feels a lot bigger and more uncertain and more dangerous. And so again, I think this just speaks to how two things can be true, that she can have this giving heart and this kind of sense of spirit and also be intensely narcissistic and have a lot of demands there. So I think having said all that, yeah, I think Bethany had needs from Carol that she wasn't getting fulfilled around this Puerto Rico thing. And that was her opportunity to get honest. That was her opportunity to like drop into her heart and like have a real maybe heart to heart with Carol and say, look, there are things I'm needing and wanting from you that I'm not getting. Look, I'm taking this personally. Look, I'm feeling rejected. Or, you know, maybe even own the egotistical part of her that says, look, I feel like you should be more aligned with what I'm doing because I'm doing something really good here. And yeah, maybe I'm being sensitive, but that's sort of what I want and need from you as my friend. Whatever her truth is, that that was sort of the task in front of Bethany, which was to like get honest with Carol in this relationship. And it seems like she didn't really do that. And instead she kind of went around chirping to people, kind of getting shitty about Adam. And uh, yeah, came into the season hot under the collar, really taking things defensively and kind of going at Carol. Uh, so that was kind of like the first domino that kind of set the, the chain of events in motion. Now that brings us to Carol. Um, 
Now, before I get into Carol, I just want to take a moment to just do a quick little bit of housekeeping, uh, which is basically if you're watching this on YouTube and if you like these videos and you want to see more of them, please help me out. Uh, hit like on this video down below. Subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you want to get alerts of, you know, when I've released videos like these, uh, go to my website, uh, hollywoodreadings.com and just send me an email and let me know that you want to be on my list. Um, okay, back to business at hand, Carol. I think that Carol just basically shut down in the face of what Bethany was doing. And, you know, to keep this short and sweet, I think Carol is someone who really doesn't want to feel how much she cares about people. I think she wants to make believe that, you know, relationships can come and go and that she's not really affected by it. Um, you know, we've seen this play out since the beginning with her on the show. If you may recall her, her initial boyfriend before Adam, it was some like musician who was on tour a lot. He wasn't around. They were in an open relationship. She prided herself on having an open relationship, just kind of like she prided herself on having this off and on thing with the younger boyfriend named Adam. Um, you know, she always seems to get leverage and mileage out of having these sort of non-committal relationships that seem to have an expiration date on them. So we saw them with this first boyfriend who was the rocker. Then she kind of falls for someone who's like decades her junior and seems to treat it as something that, you know, can only go so far or live for so long. Um, so I think just, you know, in terms of those two major romantic relationships he's had on the show, we're seeing someone who really seems to have an investment on, you know, I kind of want to keep everything open. I want to invest in relationships that, relationships that have a short shelf life, um, easy come, easy go, easy breezy. And I think then you saw some of that play out with Bethany where it's like as soon as her friend who, you know, let's be honest, we all know is difficult. We all know is messy. As soon as her friend was feeling some type of way and getting a little prickly, rather than like kind of stay, taking a step back and holding any kind of space for like the conflict that was emerging, it just seems like Carol really shut down and kind of protected herself from really feeling how much Bethany matters to her, how much the relationship matters to her, and kind of slid into that Ah, relationships easy come easy go yeah you know I love you but I mean you know there's a time and a place for everything and there's an ebb and a flow and maybe we're you know ebbing rather than flowing there's a posture that she assumed which was just kind of like okay this is what it is and you know I think we really saw that kick into high gear towards the end of the season where we sort of saw this very kind of low uh this sort of low uh down low cruelty coming from Carol of like oh well, you know, I'm just going to move on and I don't really care. And I've got Tinsley and we talk about shopping. I think that Carol prefers not to know how much she cares about people, you know, and I think obviously a lot of this relates back to losing the love of her life, her husband, and then her best friends. Um, you know, her heart was invested in that relationship and it was taken from her. And I think that, you know, what we're seeing is someone who just, I feel like if I had to put words to it, it's, I am never going to feel that kind of pain again. I'm never going to feel that kind of pain again. I'm never going to let my heart break again. And I feel like she's probably never fully let the grief all the way through. It, it actually, you know, it touches me. I feel that in my heart when I say that. I think she's never let the grief all the way through. I think Dorinda's never let the grief all the way through. Um, and I think, you know, with Carol, we're just seeing someone who is, you know, digging her heels in the ground and she's just saying, I'm not going to feel the pain of loss. And so I'm going to kind of pretend I don't care. And so then when Bethany starts acting up, Hey guys, sorry for this completely abrupt cut. Uh, for some reason, unbeknownst to me, the audio on the last minute of my video cut out for some reason and, um, was completely silent. Anyways, I was basically at the end, long story short, Bethany and Carol, two women, both of whom are refusing to go deeper into their hearts. They're refusing to risk that deeper vulnerability. And now their friendship has paid a price as a result. And I think this is a good cautionary tale for all of us. You know, it can be so tempting to resist that vulnerable place when you are coming from the true juice of your heart, where you can be rejected, where you can be hurt, where you can be unseen, where you can be unmet. But you know, if you play it safe and stay in that tit for tat defensive mode like Bethany and Carol, you then run the risk of the friendship basically imploding. Um, okay, guys, that's it for now. Um, feel free to comment. If there's anything you want me to talk about in future videos, let me know. And um, I'll see you guys all later. Bye.